So, here's a major life event that happened to me recently. Huh. Well, that put me back some cash, so I decided to sell some requests again. And I more than doubled the price, and even still, I got swamped with the requests before I realized I should put a limit on it. Huh. But I don't really mind. I like doing the requests. Because there's so much in the wide world of music that I wouldn't be exposed to if not for them. For example, let's take a look at Jetrix Adun, our first requester, and see what they requested. Well now, who could this dapper older gentleman be? Sir, would you care to introduce yourself to the audience? I'm the scat man. That's right, the scat man. John Larkin, aka Scatman John, was a 53 year old man in 1995 who'd never once recorded a pop song in his life. And he was the world's unlikeliest Euro dance star with his introductory hit, Scatman Skibby Dapa Dap Bop. Everybody stars one way or the other, so check. He didn't look like a pop star. He looked like a wedding band guitarist at best. But he owned the charts across the globe with his breakthrough single, How With Scat. And by scat, I of course mean the singing technique consisting of improvised nonsense syllables that mimic the solos of jazz instrumentalists. Yes, I know that scat has picked up a second meaning. I'm going to need you all to be grown-ups on this one. I can't promise I won't make a couple cheap jokes, but if we giggle every time I say the word scat, we're not going to get anywhere. Get it out of your system now. Yo, I'm the scat man. Oh yeah, people have been begging me for this one for years, and I've always blown it off because I have no memory of this song. In 1995, the only music I was interested in was the Sonic and Knuckles soundtrack, so what I knew of it was that it was a goofy, novelty single of the kind that the mid-90s spat out with machine gun repetition. But I am glad that I got this one for a request, because the Scatman's story and music is just heartwarmingly wonderful. The Scatman can do it, so can you. Everybody. So let's check out the guy who put the skibbity bop in skibbity bop. <laughs> Where's the Scat Man? Before we get to the song Scat Man, we have to get to the actual Scat Man himself. Before he was the Scat Man. His name is John Larkin, he's from California, and he is extremely legit. I... can... totally do that. Um... He is an actual jazz cat who'd been performing for decades in LA before he got big, and he is the real deal. He emulated all the greats. And by that, of course, I mean he had a serious drug problem in true jazz fashion. He did get over it, though. He did release one jazz album in 1986. I did take a listen to it. Because things you call dead haven't yet had the chance to be born. Jesus Christ, thank God this wasn't the hit I'd never get through my intro. So you can tell, when we say he was a jazz performer, we mean like the real jazz, not like Kenny G or anything. This is not like elevator music, this is the hard stuff with like 15 minute solos and time signature changes and everything. Also important to know, he has a stutter. Yeah, I'm a person that st stutters. I have to tell everyone that so that, that they don't think I'm crazy up here. That's obviously going to be relevant when we start talking about the big hit, but... Uh, yeah, he has a stutter, and if you know anything about speech therapy, you know that singing is a popular way to deal with it. But singing came late to the scat man. His original instinct was to hide behind his piano, and it took him many years to have the courage to add vocals. So, how on earth did a guy like this become involved in techno? Well, I don't know if you noticed, but jazz hasn't really been very popular in many decades. But it is a little bit more popular in Europe, so in 1990 he took a chance and moved to Berlin. And he started doing pretty well, you know, well enough over there, good enough to snag a record deal. But you know what was doing really well? Yes, it was the height of Eurodance. So his manager was like, hey, you do this insane scat singing and you're really good at it, why don't we put a dance beat under it? And John was like, but will people make fun of me when they find out I stutter? And his wife was like, just make it part of the song. And so... In January, 
he will have an album coming out on RCA Victor. They keep saying to me, well, it's not exactly a jazz album, but it's going to be good if it's him, and it's going to be some kind of little crossover album, and the title may be Scatman. I'm a scat man. Yeah, this song doesn't make you wait. It knows what you're here for. You're not here for the beat, or the riff, or certainly not the verses. You're here for rapid fire, incomprehensible nonsense. Now, you can get that from sports radio, obviously, but it's more fun this way. Even those things you call dead haven't yet had the chance to be born. Hey, wait a minute. That's what he sang on his jazz album. What a weird mismatched pair of songs to be connected. Now, I can't imagine what the reaction was at the time. I don't know the last time that a jazz vocal record was popular before this. Was it Louis Armstrong's Hello, Dolly? It was 30 years before this. So the scat man bringing that to modern music was something new. But was it that weird? Honestly, I don't think it was. Scatman John came out at a time when Eurodance producers realized that they could basically throw a thumping beat under anything. Old soft rock hits. Yeah. Cuban jazz. Sure. The Charleston. Absolutely. Old American folk songs. Yeah. Well, not that you should, but yes, you can. Still, of all the gimmicks, this is probably the best one. I mean, you can't get this anywhere else. Who would even think of combining jazz singing and Eurodance music? These genres are a billion miles away from each other, right? Well, kind of. On one hand, I do see what they have in common. Scat singing is a substitute for, you know, lyrics with actual words. And lyrics aren't super important to techno either. A lot of techno songs don't have lyrics at all, and, and when there are lyrics, they're usually not the focus. Plus, scatting is, a lot of the time, using your voice like an instrument to play riffs and musical phrases. And a lot of these Eurodance songs are built around one synth riff. I mean, that's all the scat man is doing there, he's singing the riff. On the other hand, there is a lot of distance between these genres, and I'm not just talking about the time difference. Jazz is about soul. Scat singing is an entirely improvisational art form. Eurodance is not improvisational. It's tight and controlled, and it's deeply, uncomfortably repetitive. It's the same 4-4 four, four thump over and over again. There's no riffing, there's no solos, you don't have to play it live. The scat man's entire style clashes with all of that. Where's the scat man? I'm the scat man. And I think that's why I really like the scat man. Because he's got this raw, very not slick edge he's bringing to this kind of sterile genre. He all asked out the meaning of scat while I'm the professor and all I can tell you is why you He's a middle-aged man. He's done some living. He's not smooth like Hathaway. He's not a condescending joke like Rednecks. I'm the scat man! The thing about the scat man is he's really not a polished vocalist. He doesn't have the most powerful of voices. He struggles to stay on key. But let him spray some random syllables and BAM! <laughs> But he does have one thing in common with Eurodance. He is a total dork. His entire existence is pure camp, especially the rapping. I should we be pleasing any politician reasons would try to cheat just reasons if they could. The state of the condition insults my intuition and it only makes me crazy and a hard life world. You see, this isn't just a song about scatting. It's a message song. Everybody stutters one way or the other, so check out my message to you. A message of hope and inspiration. It's his life story. Everybody's saying that the scat man stutters but does and never stutter when he sings. But what you don't know, I'm gonna tell you right now that the stutter and the scat is the same thing. You're on the scat man. It's his story of overcoming his stutter, which, I mean, being real here, that's a fairly serious disability. He struggled with it all his life, and now here he is, he turned it into his career. He's a professional singer. As a matter of fact, I don't let nothing hold you back. If the scat man can do it, so can you. No, 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 I absolutely cannot do that. Here, this is me trying to do that. See, it's not as easy as it looks. And it doesn't look that easy. This is like the speed metal of scatting. Even if I learned to scat saying I couldn't sing it that fast, I can barely hear it that fast. 
In fact, are we sure this isn't just the Micro Machines guy in a different hat? Each one has dramatic details, terrific trim, precision paint job, plus incredible. And maybe he was influential, because I certainly noticed other people singing nonsense syllables and dance songs after him. I only ever found it annoying. I, I just don't like Eurodance. It's an irritating genre. And I can honestly understand anyone who doesn't like the Scat Man either. He's just so cheesy and upbeat, he's like a children's singer. But he's so sincere about it. There's just no cynicism in him whatsoever. He wants to make the world a better place. And who can deny that? And now let's drain this one trick pony for all it's worth. Are you ready for Scat Man's World? Scat Man's World. Yes, Scat Man's World. Not to be confused with the other 90s artifact, Beak Man's World, which taught you about science and got entirely forgotten because it wasn't as good as Bill Nye. The world of the Scat Man is a magical place where everyone's free to be who they are and there is no pain or dishonesty. It's called Scatland. Calling out from Scatland. And I cannot emphasize this enough, do not Google Scatland. And especially don't click on any links in German. Ugh, there's some gross imagery. Calling out from Scatland. I'm calling out from Scatland's world. Well, anyways, you can see the Scatman John mythology is starting to get a little deep. He has a whole country now. Scatman's world is the place to go. This seems to be a thing with European dance stars. I mean, the Venga Boys had their Venga Bus. Eiffel 65 had their little blue alien guy's adventures. It's like they were all angling for their own cartoon show. Scat man, fat man, black and white and brown man, tell me about the color of your soul. And was this a hit? Yes, of course it was a hit. Not in this country, of course, but Eurodance is for Europe. So naturally, he reached almost as many countries as he did the first time. Techno is not really a genre for long careers, but the fact that a guy like this made it to song number two is impressive in its own right. Even with this song, which... Okay, it's not all that good. I mean, I wanted to hear more scatting, but it's at a minimum here. There's just not a lot to separate it from anything else out at the time. But he never dropped the scatting gimmick entirely, as judging by his other works like Scatman's Dance, Scat Music, Scat Mambo, and Scat Me If You Can. You wanna break free, you better listen to me. You've got and the dude's just so corny. Peace, love, happiness, and all that jazz. Attention is prevention of the lie, yeah, welcome to- Yeah, the dude basically became a cartoon character. And I can definitely think of at least one guy this reminds me of. There was this one other German guy around at the same time who was doing a lot of the same forced fun shtick. And that's good old Cap'n Jack. Hey, yo, Cap'n Jack, hey, yo, Cap'n Jack, bring me back to the railroad track. If you don't know who that guy is, well, you didn't play a lot of DDR. But he was very big in Germany. Me personally, I prefer the Scat Man. But if you like your dance music more in your face, you can go with the Captain. Yeah, I bet they had a huge rivalry. Maybe the Captain led a military assault on Scatland at one point. And then, of course, we have to get to the other single off that album, the national anthem of Scatman's world, Song of Scatland. Imagine a land of love, where people have time to care, where everybody's equal, and we all tell. of Scatland is composed of very loving, caring people who have never even heard of political corruption. <laughs> I love you, Scatman. I really do. But who in God's name is this for? Who could possibly want this? The people of Scatland speak in Scottish. Scottish is a language not quite like a leprechaun. They speak in Scottish, huh? That's great. I assume that's like Simlish, just incomprehensible gibberish all around. But he, he's still gonna scat over this, right? He's gotta. I don't know how you do it, but. <laughs> He did it. He did it. Hey, Louis! Yeah? Is that you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm Scatman John. Would you like to sing a song, man? Well, sure.
chill. Good. Look out. One, two, three, four. Okay. I love absolutely everything about this. Everybody party down in Louisiana. Everybody jam. This is the single from his second album, Everybody Jam. And to me, this is his best song. I'm the scat man, you know, that was, that was proof of concept. But this is the song where it becomes not a novelty to me. That trumpet work is great. He's doing a virtual duet with Louis Armstrong. But it sounds like a real song. I mean, it's still cheesy as hell. He's teaching you about how great Louis Armstrong was. But if you ask me, this is the best thing you could have gotten by making this aging jazz hipster make his music work with a dance beat under it. I want to hear the greatest trumpet in the world. Well, sadly, in both America and Europe, the appetite for 40s jazz-influenced techno had finally run its course. Truly a shame. And you'd think that would be the end of the road for the scat man. Except for one little thing. It turns out that the scat man was absolutely huge in Japan. Shoo, 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 super and when I say huge, I mean huge. Scatman is one of the biggest foreign acts of all time in Japan. Here, here's a list on Wikipedia I found. Best-selling foreign albums in Japan. And th there's all the same acts you'd expect. You know, the Beatles, Mariah Carey, Queen, and of course, the Scatman. They loved him to fucking death in Japan. Here he is on a can of Coke. There's a Funko doll of him. He sold pudding. I think we can all agree, between Japan and America, Japan got the better pudding salesman. Unfortunately, he would not get to enjoy his overseas fame for very long. This story has a sad ending. In August of 1999, he collapsed on stage. It turned out that he'd been performing despite being diagnosed with lung cancer. He passed away a few months later in December of 1999. But no matter how tragic the ending, it is still an inspiring story to me. He's a man who got one shot, late in life, and he took it. God bless you, scat man. Yes, definitely. abso skip it lootly This was just a stupid novelty song to me before I did this episode. And now it is a song from one of my favorite artists I've ever covered here. I feel nothing but happiness listening to this. And though he is no longer with us, I truly believe that the Scat Man is still out there in Scatland, making our dreams come true. Scat Man! Scat Man! Scat Man! Scat Man! Scat Man! Scat Man!